Here are the stats for every player at IEM Cologne 2021 so far, with the further players to the right having the highest rating and the highest players on the graph having the highest impact rating. Some of the usual suspects show up near the middle of the pack. Players like Device and Zaiwu, whose teams haven't had the best tournaments and who are already out. And some of the CIS players are showing up and having some of the best ratings at the tournament too. But out there in the top right of the graph, in a league of his own, is simple. With a 1.52 rating and 1.74 impact rating so far at this event. If he could keep these bonkers stats up, Simple would record his statistical best big event of all time. And this graph is ranking Simple against his own other excellent events. And he is still elite so far at IEM Cologne 2021. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Hawker, the Counter-Strike Scholar, finally back to take a look at some stats from IEM Cologne 2021 so far. In case you're wondering where I've been, I was casting some of the B-Stream games at IEM Cologne, and I even had the pleasure of casting this stupendous ace from Simple. Well, this CT side. Oh, oh, nice shot from Simple. Alistair goes for the fight, unable to get the kill. Simple isn't happy with one. He wants oh, even more, and he gets the shot through the oh. door. Another shot lands. Simple looking for it. He finds a headshot. Simple just taking over right now. Oh, he's going for more. Oh. Dingo. He's going for more. Simple's hitting all the headshots with the orb, and it's going to be the ace. Simple puts Navi to 15. He just fights everyone. And funnily enough, another stat that HLTV pointed out recently is that Simple already has three aces at this event. And if he gets one more, he would have the most aces at any big event ever. No one else has managed to get four in one tournament. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into some more fun stats from Cologne so far. The first one I want to jump into was Fallen's flash stats for this event because he not only had the most flash assists per round by a decent distance, but he also had the most enemy flash time by a mile. He was over a second ahead of anyone else in this stat, with Glaive's 2.90 seconds per round of enemy flash time only coming in second to Fallen's 3.92 seconds. He's a full second ahead. It is also quite cool to see a lot of the more experienced or smart players do well in this stat. And it never really felt like Fallen had any crazy good flash lineups. I just really enjoyed watching him being so good at knowing when to throw flashes on the fly at the perfect time. Fallen's fantastic flash stats also helped lead Liquid to having some ridiculous stats on their T-side flashes. Now, these stats can be map dependent. It's going to be easier to get flash assists on specific maps, but still, Liquid dominate on the T side flash assist stats for this event. They averaged 0.6 flash assists per round on the T side, while the next best team, Big, who are normally the team who top this stat, only were able to get a 0.39 number. So whether you're the biggest Fallen fanboy or Fallen hater in the world, let's all just go ahead and sit back and enjoy some of the flash assists and some of the successful utility that Fallen was able to pull off at this event. Let's also give some credit to the teams getting flash assists on the CT side. And so far, Na'Vi have actually topped the charts in this stat, slightly beating out big yet again. Definitely nice to see Na'Vi's togetherness being shown in some of these CT flash assist stats. And if they can keep that up going into the playoffs, they could definitely be the main team to watch and likely the favorites to win the whole thing. One of the stats I've enjoyed following most is Furia's in-game leader, Art, and how his aggression stats and opening kill stats are doing on both sides now that we're back on LAN. And on CT side, he is still doing great. He is an absolute outlier in how often he's attempting the entry. No one else even comes close as to how aggressive he's playing on CT side. And he's keeping up a really solid success rate in these fights at 64%. That's above average, and that is incredible. But on T side, we don't have the same story, sadly. 
He is still attempting the entry quite a lot of the time, but his success rate is extremely low. At just 24% of his opening duels on T-side being won, that is one of the lowest in this tournament. Art's T-side struggles are something I actually talked about in a recent video, and I decided to go ahead and check if they correlated with the CT and T-side win percentage for Furia at this event, and unfortunately they do. On this graph, I tracked teams CT and T side win percentages for the tournament. And you can see that Furia are one of the lowest teams on the graph in terms of T side win percentage, despite having a pretty good CT win percentage. Up there with some of the teams that even made it through to the playoffs. Although they weren't quite up there with two of the teams that surprised us all to make the playoffs in FaZe and Astralis, who had some crazy good CT side win percentages at this event. Sticking with this graph, you'll see that Astralis and FaZe are actually two of the teams that are most interesting going into playoffs because they both have the first and second best win percentages on CT side, while also having the worst and second worst T-side win percentages at the whole event, even worse than the teams that have been knocked out. It is very cool to see both of these experienced teams doing so well on CT side though. You do wonder whether getting back to LAN comes into play there and maybe makes it easier to hold angles when you don't have ping to think about. And as for my thoughts as to why they're having such big T-side struggles, well, I made a video talking about how I don't think FaZe's loose style of play is too good for them as a team. I'm not sure if their players suit that style. And something that's been a huge problem is Carrigan has struggled heavily in his opening duels. He's still trying to play that aggressive role a lot, but he's very rarely winning those fights. For Astralis, though, honestly, I didn't get to cast them on the B stream, so I don't have the best idea. But some of their stats on T-side don't look great. They're getting the opening the least out of any team at the tournament on their T-side. And even when they get the opening, they're not converting that 5v4 round win percentage too often. So I didn't really get a chance to catch enough of the Astralis games, unfortunately. But definitely something to keep an eye on going into those playoffs. As for both of these teams' CT-side success... It seems to me like with the game being back on LAN, there's much more of a chance for players to get reads in individual rounds. I saw a bunch of rounds where Carrigan would get some good timing on a flank or would figure out what his opponents were doing. And maybe it is that slight bit of hesitation that some players have had coming back to LAN, which makes it so that it's easier to find those reads in these sorts of scenarios. And that seems to be what's helping some of these experienced teams out. The final team I want to give a little bit of love to with a cool stat is Renegade. They may have only played five maps in the main event, but we weren't even sure if they'd make it to the main event because they'd been playing in their local Aussie scene. So we didn't know what level they were going to be at. But despite losing their IGL, Dexter, they were so impressive throughout this Sicko. tournament. He's been sick so far in this tournament, oh! and once again, he's gone sick on mode with a double kill. Specifically on T-side, and specifically in their series against OG, they had some incredible reads. They played a really slow and patient play style, which a lot of underdog teams struggle with, and it shows in one of these stats I'm showing you here. Renegades had the highest 5v4 win percentage on T-side. This is a pretty small sample size because they weren't getting that opening kill too often. But when they did get that opening kill, they were winning almost every round, which epitomizes the success they were having as a team with their really well thought through style. And just so many rounds where they would get an early kill on Inferno and then they would make the CTs panic and they'd make them peek into them. It was so fun to watch Renegades playing like this. I was really thoroughly impressed by them on the B stream considering they were a team coming into this that I didn't know what to expect and I, I didn't expect them to be able to play in a way where they were able to actually outthink some of their opponents and outcall Alexi B at times in the play -in. I'm not sure if their individual skill is going to be enough going forwards to 
continue to go deeper and continue to improve? I really hope so, though, because this was such a cool run, such a cool thing to have with the ability to have international lands back. I'm glad one of the international teams got a chance to show us that they maybe are a bit better than their region would expect them to be. So there we go. Some cool stats going into Cologne. Excited to see if Simple can keep on doing simple things throughout the rest of the event. And I'm going to have to rush this one out quickly to try and get it up before the playoffs begin. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. I forgot to give the subscriber plug. So if you made it all this way, subscribe, damn it. I'm trying to see if I can hit 100k by the end of the year. I'm speed running the outro. Okay, everybody. Goodbye.